Hello world, how's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. So I'm coming to you guys in the dark a little bit. I do have one fish thing staying on. I was gonna do a video on this, kind of taking that down, getting rid of all that, but the timing hasn't been right. And I'm waiting for like maybe a swap or something to take all that too, because I just would hate to throw it all away. So we will get to that and how I was gonna make it look and just some other ideas for something like this with the Brazilian Penny War, which was my last video. But anyways, this video, we're gonna do a custom aquarium that I am super excited to finally have up. I'm loving it, it's been running for a while now. And uh, anyways, let's share that with you guys. All right, finally I can get this a new home. This is a really sweet tank I got from Custom Aquariums. As you can see, it's really tall. Look at the top on this, this thing is heavy duty. Now I do prefer tops because it keeps the snails from climbing over. Sometimes shrimp and fish can get over in rimless tanks. So I myself prefer the rims on there, but look at the seal on there. This seal is heavy, heavy duty. But yes, I'm excited to get that into its home finally. And big shout out to Custom Aquariums for creating this for me. I really appreciate it and check them out. If you guys are looking for that odd sized aquarium that you just, they don't make it, they can make it for you. And this will be its new home right here. Got a piece of styrofoam down there. That pad came from, well, it's styrofoam, kind of like foam cell or whatever. But it came with the tank, so that'll go here. I'll be able to hook it up and it'll be part of my water change system for this system, which I'm excited about. That way I can have my water cycled and uh, not have to worry about the little containers with fresh water and the way it exchanges. Yeah. And Sarah's geared up. She's going to help me. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> right, all right, all right. Just like that. Boom. I just got to get a pump to go in there. We'll be set. That's what the whole system looks like. Now to get this started, I'm going to go ahead and go with some Eco Complete here. Put that in the bottom. First layer, not much. I also have some leftovers in here that I could use in there as well. So I got to dig that out, which I've already been kind of moving over into these 75s over here. And for the next step, I'm going to use this Supernaturals, one of my favorites from Caribsy. Boom. It's a nice, decent, deep substrate. I think I may leave it at that. I was thinking about adding a little more sand onto it. So I got some older stuff. Hmm. I don't want to go too deep. Now, as far as the plant choice, I kind of want to go with Balancey Crip or Jungle Val. I don't know. That's been done so many times. We got this other pond that geet in I would like to get in there. Hmm. But either way, I want a plant that's going to grow long and tall. And Angustifolia would be kind of cool in there too. Really show the tree kind of aspects of that Angustifolia. And here I went ahead and put a rock in it. See there's a gap back there. I'll go ahead and fill that with sand. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add some water in here down to this line. That way, whatever's in here can go ahead and condense before I really put the weight down on that. Which will be for this pump. That'll be so fish can't get back there. Always a proud moment to put the water in. And that loud noise, that's my RO. So I'm mixing it with tap and RO. Very hard to see, but especially with the foam, but that is actually sand right there, not just foam from the water. But the water is about to the top there, so now we can put it in the pump. 
And for this process, I just use this and put that in with that, and we'll put that with that. I mean, bada boom. All right, so we got that plumbed up. I just have to wait for it to dry. Oh, I should turn this. Crap. Now, while we wait for that, we can go ahead and move this over here and get this project going and get this. Oh, it's going to be awesome. No, I'm just playing. But stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll be doing that project too, amongst all these other things and projects going on in this crazy place. Pump is plumbed up and ready to go. So essentially what this will do is this will pump the water in and through this system here. That way... When I do do a little bit of water change, I can add some more cycled water back up on top of it to just help cycle it up with these smaller containers. Doing water changes aren't bad with it, but it would just be nicer to have this cycled water for them. Plus, it gives me another reason for a tank. And I figured some discus would look really cool in here. And the hardest part was figuring out the plant option because there's a lot of cool plants that would look really cool in here. Like the hygrophilia, hygrophilia and gustafolia, which some of you guys may remember from my 75 gallon in the garage where it just grew up and out and all crazy like big tree and bush. So it would do the same in that big tank. That's what I got left of it. It's cleared out of the other tank now, but really cool plant. I think that would be a good choice. And that hygrophilia is also known as willow hygrophilia, so it'll look like a willow tree. But anyways, this is a balance crypt, which this gets super, super tall. Of course, since the tank's not as tall and the water's only halfway there, it's just long. But that is cryptocorn balance. A real fish, he's being shy. Zoom. And I got another plant like this that's more crinkly. But uh, this is the plant, mind the glare there, and the copious amounts of evaporation. But this is a Pontagetan of some type. But as you can see, the leaves are all bullated. Super crinkled, really cool. But once again, it grows real tall, long. And of course, it's grown out of this shelly tank. It's kind of an abnormal tank, which I'll just take probably the mom piece and leave a couple of the small pieces in here. I am planning on doing something else with these guys because they're always trying to bury each other with the shells or with the sand and the shells. You can see they do have babies in there though. Well, this light's still off, but we all know what, well, most of us know what it looks like, but jungle vow, of course it gets crazy, crazy long. But I figured that would be kind of difficult with discus because what will happen is the food will get down in between the jungle valve. The discus won't be able to get to it. That's why, that's why I think this plant will be better because we won't have that problem. We'll keep it in the corner. As you can see, it fared pretty well with just staying in the corner and in its place. So for discus, I think this is the better choice. But if I ever decided to put egg scatters in there, yeah, definitely. That would be the better choice. So let's get one of those in here and fill this up and uh, bring you guys back. Break the babies off. Ooh. All right. All right, so that's in there. I'm back there, dug out some sand, fill her up. That thing is huge. I was shocked how big that thing really is, just fitting in a 20 gallon. It didn't look like it was that big either. Awesome, good news is with this pump, I can fill this up real fast and oxygenate it real well without disturbing much. So that's gonna be huge. It's gonna be awesome. We got my tap on full blast. 
granted I could turbo boost it a little more up there. But it's not even coming out of this system yet. I don't know if I want to mess with my turbo boosters. But, that fills up real nice like. I like it. Look at that oxygenation. It's beautiful. Very interesting. It's kind of inspiring. Now I decided to go ahead and put RO in there. I'm doing 50 50. Run about 300 some TDS, so it should be about 150 in between 200 TDS after I 50 50 it. But since it is so deep, the RO doesn't have quite enough pressure to push all the way down, so it is starting to come up out of these containers a little bit. This is dribbling. Not much. It's not flowing like it should, so there's still water getting down there, but something to think about. The depth. Now, I was thinking discus, but I also got some angel fish. Because if I have discus, I'm going to want to warm it up. I don't know if I want to do that. But I guess it would just be small warm water changes for these guys. I don't want a big temp flux with such a small space. And there's not really much in here right now. Um, just a few fish. They're actually about to get moved out. And hopefully I'll be able to fill up some killies soon. No, in May I should be able to. But yeah, I don't know. Angel fish would be kind of cool too. Maybe just no fish. I just don't want a dirty fish. I want a decently clean fish in there that's not going to muck the water up too much. That way when I do exchange the water, it won't be so serious. And this I actually changed plan on exchanging quite frequently and being discus they do like the frequent water changes so I don't know I'll have to think about that but I should have done that in black material you can get black tubing and piping you could always cut it off and redo it and it never hurts to get some cycled aquarium water too Speed up that cycle now with the plant being put in there. That old substrate that I had, and definitely now this it will help keep that cycle real quick. I do have some foam media I can squeeze in here as well. I don't think that'll be necessary because I'm still I'm going to give it a couple days before I put the fish in it. That way I can just season a little bit naturally. I just cleaned out my sponges for my power heads not long ago. Alright, I got a light on it. And, uh, yeah, this thing filled up the whole tank. How awesome is that? Got it filled up. Got the Apontagetan, whatever type that is. That thing is insane. It goes all the way up. And I believe this is 48 inches. I don't remember. Good thing with these custom aquariums, they did come with the top, so I was able to just put a light here on top. This is one of those cheap, one cheap grow lights you can get off of eBay. Thought I'd try it. I think it was only like 20 or 30 bucks. So I bought one, and I figured this would work well for this. The water's still a little cloudy. Being new tank and all. We'll let it settle. That leaf will actually help break down and up the cycle out as well, so I'm not too worried about it. I like the rock, it's kind of like snow covered. I did sprinkle a little more sand down at the back there, so that kind of gave the snow look there as well. That plant is just magnificent. All right, so I got the top off. It's been a couple days here. I wiped the air bubbles off, which you can see there's still some on this side. That I don't mind, but I did want to just kind of see in it without having to look through all the air bubbles. Definitely digging this plant in there. I can't believe it reaches all the way up there and fills as much as it does just from being in a 20 gallon high. And I figured go ahead and help with the cycle since i got a lot of them i'll go ahead and throw a guppy in here so you don't really require much they're not very picky fish 
and him being in there, I may even give him a buddy. Wait, well, he isn't too lonely. Hmm, trick is just catching one. I don't want a female. I don't want to end up having to catch babies out. Boom, got him. Oh, yeah, these are real cool. The red and blues, platinum red and blues. Should help kickstart it. Wish I could keep it with the top off, but with the splash bag that comes from the sink, and then also I need somewhere for the light. I may get another light, like a hang on the back or something. I may do something with the background. I don't know. Maybe just a white board back there. That way I don't have to paint anything. Just stick some poster board or something back there. All right, the lid is back on. And I'm gonna give this a couple days since I am dealing with discus. I mean, I know sometimes it can be too picky, but I do want to make sure this is nice and cycled since I didn't use a whole lot of lively material in here as far as like aquarium water or squeezing a sponge out. Granted, the sand did come from a live tank that it did kind of dry out for the most part, but I'm sure there's some things in there still that will feed and feast and help grow. Same with the bacteria coming off the plants and its root material. I did use a couple pitchers of aquarium water. You know, always safe than sorry, that's my motto. And these guys will definitely help. Cool to just see fish in there. And once again, big shout out to Custom Aquariums for hooking me up with this tank. Quite a unique tank. I love it. Absolutely love it. You know how us fish people are wanting to put a tank in every space. Those are your guys to call to help for that. All right, so the tank's nice and seasoned and ready for these guys. I gave it like a week since I had a lot of cycled material in there. It's nice and mature. You can give it a little water change, but I got to get this guy out. And the thing I don't like about with discus is catching them with nets. So I prefer to catch them with the container. So I have a feeling nets really mess with their skin coat and slime coat. And this method is a lot better for transporting them. Luckily, it ain't that big that this container works, but let's see what we can do. All right, so now that I got them caught in the net. Wasn't easy, of course. And get them in here. That way the net doesn't cling to them. Not so bad whenever the net's in the water because it wasn't really up against the skin so much. So, and he's in there. Absolutely beautiful. And all that stuff is just roots from that Brazilian pennywort. It's pretty much a substrate down on the bottom anymore. Let's do it. Right. And always, whenever transferring or getting new fish, I always like to give them uh, mass, fish mass. So I'll get room temperature water going here. I got a carbon block so I can use this water. Now, if you don't have a carbon block, you can use aquarium water. But this will help get all that junky stuff out of there so it doesn't contaminate the new tank. So there's probably no contaminations in there, but better safe than sorry it's always my motto Looks like he's pretty happy with it already, already checking everything out. Glad to see it didn't just run and hide. You can see that leaf, as I showed earlier, how it's been eaten down. 
pretty cool. Just gotta get the other one in there now. Man, still can't believe that came out of a 20 gallon high. It is crazy. With these discus, it seemed like love at first sight with them, but now this one's being kind of honoring to the other one. You can see the other one hiding in the back there. And then now this one's just scared of the camera. Anyways, hierarchy with discus, often they'll pick on each other. I've been feeding them multiple times a day, just to kind of keep that one from getting hangry, because I think that's what kind of triggered it to begin with. And it's not like real aggressive, but it's enough to shy the one back to where they're not always together. But they will hang out. They will eat together a little bit. But there is definitely a dominance thing going on with them. A few weeks later, still no glass scraping, which has been nice because I've been able to do water changes every few days in here with the ease of this system. It's been great. All right, so there you have it. There's a custom aquarium. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna leave the discus in there. I'm still debating like what I'm gonna do exactly with that tank. And if I do get some discus, I don't think that's a pair. So I am definitely gonna try to get a pair if I do decide to do discus. I don't know, let me know what you guys would put in a tank like that. It's kind of a different tank. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like, subscribe, that would be awesome of you. Until next time, everybody, peace. Have a great one.